Hello everyone, Pelletubber. Welcome back to the A through Z playthrough. Today we're taking a look at Genji, the assassin that more people hate in this game than anyone else. Over the course of this past year, he has been nerfed over and over and over and over in the mobility department because a lot of the hero's population thought that hero's ability to move around, uh, the, that Genji's ability to move around the screen so easily was a little bit oppressive and took a lot of fun out of the game. I agree. So it's been scaled down in a lot of different ways. We'll be talking about that throughout today's video, but he was added into the game on April 25th, 2017. He has a 54.4% win rate, making him the fourth lowest uh, win rate assassin in the game. So a lot of people play him because he's the third most played slash banned assassin with a 50.5% popularity. That means you have a 50% chance of having either a Genji on your team, on the enemy team, or being banned if you're playing in Hero League or Team League, which is astonishing. So, very technical hero, is difficult to play despite what a lot of people say. That's why his win rate is so low, but his ability to ruin your fun is so high. Uh, we're gonna try to play him today with this team of viewers. Hopefully it goes well. This is a test of the National Wireless Alert System. No action is needed. Well, your fucking test worked! Congratulations! Alright, ladies and gentlemen, we find ourselves on the Dragonshire map today. Um, there are a few different ways of playing Genji. If you're just getting used to the character, then I recommend going for his E build throughout his entire talent tree. Uh, it allows you to just kind of zip around, deal damage, and then zip out. Now, I do want to stress that I'm not good at Genji, but I like to think that I'm better at everything than the average Joe. Whether or not that's ever true. So we're going to go for Swift as the wind at level one, but then we're going to be deviating to his Q talents so I can hopefully, you know, deal some safe damage to this enemy team. Now their team comp is kind of weird. They're going to be playing really far back, and they have a lot of ways to shut me down if I go in. Namely, the Gorge, Silence, Stuns from Urel. Uh, but, you know, we're going to try. So that was a swift strike through the enemy team, dealing damage to all of them, and then trying to dip back out to safety. Which, I mean, I was kind of successful at. This tussle in the middle lane is going on for a little while. You've left your assassin exposed. Goodbye. So, that mobility you just saw is Genji using his trait and his E ability, his cyber agility, and his swift strike to move around. Now, the E ability goes a set distance each time. The range of this ability has been nerfed over the course of this past year. So, even though I just covered a whole fucking screen, hey, I didn't go a screen and a half, you should be thankful. Our cyber agility has a five second longer cooldown than what it did at the beginning of this year. So they really are, they really are, credit where credit's due, trying to scale down the mobility that Genji has. Uh, it's also harder to get resets on your E ability if you kill someone with swift strike, uh, if you kill them or hit them with swift strike and then they die, I think it used to be within two seconds you would be able to swift strike again. Now it's like 1.5 seconds or something like that. They're trying to tighten up that window a little bit more. So as Genji, I don't really think you should be laning at all. Your your job is to get in and um, poke at people, try to gank. Unfortunately, we were just kind of sitting in the middle lane for most of this game. Deflect is our W ability, and this sends back damage from each source of damage that you're taking. So you'll notice I walked into the minion wave there. That was on purpose. Uh, because there was more minions, which means they're hitting me more, and I'm going to be deflecting damage back at our opposition. Uther completely out of mana. Uther is a good character to combo with Genji, but Uther himself is just not very good in the game right now. So I think we're actually going to have some trouble with sustaining these team fights. I don't know what to do with this bottom lane, man. I have no idea. No one's soaking middle, so I'll go try to soak that. Uh, we're going to go for Shuriken Mastery here, so the goal is just to land some Shurikens real fast, which we did, and then dip back out to safety. 
Now, Genji was balanced around the idea that he has no self-sustain, so everything he's doing needs to be quick, needs to be decisive, and he needs to deal a lot of damage. Looks like the enemy team is... Not gonna be getting that just yet. I mean, I'm delaying. Hopefully they're doing something. That's all I got. Damn. Poison got me. How much of an overkill? 14. Damn, damn, damn. Uh, the enemy team is sitting a level ahead of us already. Because of the three kills that they've gotten so far. We're matching their soak relatively okay. It's just those kills that they've gotten. Uh, of course, as this game goes on longer, Asmodan just keeps getting stronger and stronger. So hopefully we can buff him up a little bit. He is still pushing. I'm just trying to poke at these guys, trying to get him to move back. But more importantly, we're trying to get shuriken stacks. We really need those to deal damage later on. Uh, it does look like Furion's a little overextended. But that dragon took care of that. We, of course, deflected that damage back at the dragon. Meanwhile, uh, Sergeant Hammer's been pushing bottom this whole time. I don't think we really have an answer to the Sergeant Hammer. I'm just gonna leave. I mean, would a Smash Varian help out with that? Where did he go? He went taunt. I mean, keeping a hammer still could be good. Our map awareness is just a little lacking right now. I'll try to call stuff out a little bit more. So again, I'm just jumping in, dealing my shuriken damage, and then trying to leave as fast as possible, trying to get those stacks up. We need to put more pressure on the hammer. We have to. So we were able to get our swift strike reset there by going in, hitting him with the, with the swift strike, and then him dying within the next 1.5 seconds. We're going to reduce the cooldown on our deflect so we can use it a little bit more often. And I always try to look for these different areas of engagement when I play Genji. I try to not go in from the same direction over and over. Try to keep the guys guessing. Looks like Blaze is having some fun with Stitches and Yorel up here. Let's try to move up and help them out. Good stuff. Time to fill this dream with my teenage A's. Not gonna get a reset from this. Everything about everyone in the world is so cruel. Always your shrines are gathering power. Damn, James Bond. That sounds really difficult for you. How's our damage looking? We're doing okay. Nothing, nothing crazy. Now the shurikens were the first ability to actually be on a reload system. So, as the cooldown of the shuriken goes down, we're actually going to get all of our stacks back at one time. Which is really nice for doing consistent damage. Uh, I was trying to do a decent deflect there. It didn't quite work out for me. Uh, so, one thing you could do to maximize your damage in these team fights a little bit more is waiting... Uh, throwing one shuriken, waiting for the cooldown to come almost back up, and then engaging again. Uh, you can use two shurikens, immediately get a stack of three back. So it's kind of a way of increasing your damage a little bit more. So for instance, I know I'm going in on stitches here, so I just want to go ahead and throw that shuriken. Try to engage on him. And then in like a second, I have three more to throw. That's the idea anyway. Unfortunately, it took a little bit too much tower damage. Gonna go down to Uther and see if I can get a heal there, or at least a sippy cup. Uh, Blaze should be able to hold middle for quite some time. Uh, two, one. Got it? Going in, boys! Going in! Let's win this shit! You better run. I can deflect that damage and then swift strike out. Beautiful. So I'm assuming he went with Uther because we wanted to do some Dragon Blade shenanigans. Uther's not a very popular pick these days any longer. Uh, so I'm going to go for the Dragon Blade. We'll try to make that work. We do have a Gorge on Stitches here, so we do need to keep our distance. That being said, even if he does Gorge us, we should be able to use our mobility to get out of trouble, no problem. Uh, can Asmodee have TikTok? I'll go help him. Go try to secure this.
Once we finish this quest, once we finish the Shuriken Mastery quest, after we hit 75 heroes, Cyber Agility now refunds two stacks of... I mean, I don't win this at all. I'm sure she does that. Cyber Agility refunds two stacks of our Shuriken. So we can use this little gap closer here to get even more Shuriken out. You motherfucker. I used my E ability right when he gorged. Right when he fucking gorged. Dodge that. Two, one. And we're out. Damn, that sucked. I thought if I was just spamming it, I could get out of town. I could get out of dodge. Didn't work out for me. I'm gonna go back and try to take bottom. The damage is looking pretty good. Ah! Motherfucker, get out of here. Who you think you are? Now he did delay me from going down to the bottom lane, so it looks like they are gonna get middle. Unfortunately. Let's go try to help out. Now, coming up here at level 13, Shingen is where this build really starts to pop off. If we are able to land all of our shurikens on a single target, which I mean, isn't that hard to do, especially when you have giant hitboxes like Stitches and the Dragon Knight, uh, we are gonna deal critical hit damage. So it's increasing our effectiveness with the shurikens even, even faster, even more. I gotta stop doing that. Swift Strike on full cooldown again. Is my yep. Okay, I'm okay. Let's go ahead and sip. I kind of thought you became unstoppable at the start for some reason. I'm not sure why I thought that. We're okay. Luckily for us, Sergeant Hammer's not doing anything in the bottom lane. How we look at team? Do we want to fight this? I do have the Dragon Blade. I can be gorged with the Dragon Blade, though. So I kind of feel like I should wait for Gorge to happen first. Now yeah, I'm doing it now. So this Dragon Blade is a pretty good AoE of ours. Allows us to deal a very substantial amount of AoE damage around our character. Good stun there. Good stun. Oh, Shingen, Shingen. So I need to get close enough to her that I can hit her with every one of these shurikens. Does take some practice, but once you do it, it's so worth it. Like the damage, the damage spike at this level is huge. <laughs> now, unfortunately, there are some mechanics that Genji has that make him feel really oppressive to play against. You just saw one of them there. The other one is oftentimes, especially in the early game, he can dive behind your towers and deal so much damage to you. This was a bit more of a problem before that last tower was removed. You remember there was a tower here uh, or like here um, because that would be you get a target to low health. You dash behind their wall with your swift strike and then all of a sudden you're reflecting four sources if not more if the enemy is hitting you four sources of damage back at the attacker while they're trying to run away while they're trying to be safe if you hit them with a swift strike you also reset your cooldown when you kill them with the deflect damage and then you can just swift strike right the fuck back out it's it's really unfun <laughs> i think is the nicest way of putting that it's really unfun <laughs> So I'm kind of glad they scaled that back a little bit, made it a little bit harder to do. But it's still definitely possible. Uh, your rail's rotating up. I just want to get some free damage in on her. Never mind. Who's on the point, Hammer? Yeah, I'm jumping out of that then. We'll grab our sippy cup, use that regen to fight. Bolting. Trying to like reposition in between each ult too to try to stay a little bit safer. My damage there wasn't spectacular by any means. I didn't do it this time, you motherfucker. <laughs> Go ahead and dodge that. Come in for some damage here. Look at that burst damage! 
I don't think it matters because it's Urel. But look at that burst damage. Now we're gaining bottom. Varian can grab middle. Looking good. I'll go help him. I'll go help him. Uh, we're going to do final cut. Swift Strike does more damage after a delay. There's the damage. <gasps> no fucking way. I thought I had that. I really did. I really thought I had that. Really good interrupt on his part. Wow. That was so fucking close. Let's go help Blaze. Just need to be careful. Deflecting. Jumping over this wall. I'll hit him on the way out. There we go. Okay, good kills, team. Good fucking kills. Moving up. My soul. Mayhem. So all the shit, what I'm trying to convey, and I hope I'm conveying it properly, is that this is really hard. <laughs> like, a lot of people are like, oh, Genji's so OP, but you gotta spend some time. You gotta practice them. It's really difficult to play Genji well. I'm so out of mana. I'm so out of mana. And you have to find people out of position a lot of times like that too. Like Dingo didn't have any business being there. But because he was out of position, I was able to take advantage of that. Very well. Uh, one of the things I also wanted to say about this Shingen talent is that it actually does some really good siege damage. Because of course you can just position yourself right up against the tower. Uh, you can just throw Q after Q after Q. It all deals critical hit damage and you can cleave stuff down pretty quick. So, for example, oh, come on, this again. Deflect. I hope. Oh, good, 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 good. I was gonna say, I really hope that Gorge fucked his team. And it did. Okay, we got the region globe. Honestly, we should be pushing. Eh, we can push middle, actually. I was gonna say, we should probably push bottom. Just because it's easier to push later on. We can flex some of this root damage. Backing out. One thing I do think I can do better on Genji is remembering that he has a fucking auto attack. I forget about that so often. Because he feels so, like, ability focused. Didn't have gorge that time. Gorging the most mobile hero over and over. Well, you see, the thing is, I'm the streamer, so he has to. <laughs> so this is where I want to be, immediately in front of Urel. If I can put my hitbox onto someone else's hitbox, I'm guaranteed to deal that shuriken damage as fast as possible. And its, bur it's burst damage is nuts, it really is. Like, it's such a good talent. The thing is, it's so much harder than the other ones that it's difficult to pull off. Uh, do we want to become the dragon, or do we want to have our shurikens pierce? I kind of want to fight over this. I definitely want to fight over this. I want it. I want to bet. The dragon is gonna fucking become me. Let's put it that way, boys. Good shit. Oh, Genji plays. I can't fucking talk and do Genji plays. I have to do one or the other. It's fucking one or the other. I chose to do the Genji plays. All right, I'm gonna go bottom, grab this for the team. You know what, fuck this wall on the way out. Beautiful. Asmodan should be right on top, right at the start. We could have fast capped this really, really easy. Looks like we still can. Looks like we still can. 
All right, and then we just go reinforce middle. We have the level 20 advantage to the enemy team's level 17. He stepped up so far. Damn. He's tanky. We have 45 seconds on our ult, so we're not going to be able to use that again anytime soon. I do kind of want to go in on Hammer, but it's a bad call. Nice kick on Urel. Now it's not as bad of a call. Way overcommitted. Way overcommitted. I hope we're there. Ah! That's 100% my fault. That's fucking 100% my fault. Oh, he had to find you! He had to find you! Oh, oh, he had to find shield, though! No! <sighs> Was it two seconds? Damn. Damn, damn, damn. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it was 100% my fault, then. I go back to my original statement. I could tell I was fucking overcommitted for on that, like, the second I went in. But I was like, well, I'm already fucking in here. I might as well keep going. Enlist the aid of these mercenaries. Okay, we're going to have our ult next team fight. The enemy team's probably going to hit level 19. We should try to apply as much pressure as we can to bottom, because that means we can grab three mercenary camps to push bottom. Top lane's kind of a dead lane. Like, it's good that we're getting it down, but, like, you never want to fight on this bridge. There's only one mercenary camp to help push. Bottom is always the priority on Dragonshire. Always, always, always. Sergeant Hammer's looking a little overextended right now. I wonder if she's listening to the stream and is immediately going to back up. That's the other problem with live streaming these boys. The enemy team, they, they somehow know more than, than they did last year. It's like they, they're in tune with my tactics for some reason. How, how could that be? Uh, I didn't go for the piercing shurikens just because I saw an opportunity to get a lot of value out of my ult immediately in front of me. I kind of made a snap decision. But if you get piercing shurikens, you're obviously going to be able to do more AoE damage, but it's not going to be easy to proc the Shingen on that. Like, that's still going to be hard. We should fight because Hammer's back in the base. We need to stay away from the gorge. We're trying to dance around this gorge. I did a lot of damage there. I hope it's enough. Doesn't look like it will be. Fuck. Let's start backing out, team. That orbiting gun from Hammer hits hard. I think we immune the damage with a divine shield, but it hits hard. And that's also, you know, the gray main syndrome of playing Gigi is also part of the reason his win rate's so low. Like, you see opportunities like that. Uh, well, let's put it this way. I saw an opportunity like that, and I jumped in before my team was really positioned to go in on that hard of an engagement. So I kind of just fed. kind of just died. We did have the Divine Shield that time, and I knew that going in. I made sure this time <laughs> before I went in. But still, like, with great power comes great responsibility. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Hungry, hungry hippo being used in the top lane. Doesn't look like any values coming out of it. Varian had a really good body block there, but moved out of it. I was about to compliment him on it. I'm just going to head down to the bottom lane. It looks like they're doing fine up here. Nice dunk on the Furion. Beautifully done. My soul. All right, I'm capping. Looks like they're going for a fast cap middle. This is good. This is good. Oh. This is actually a fight. And that's going to be GG, boys. Well played. I was a little worried about being our most consistent damage output, but it worked out.
It worked out. Azradan had some really good kill secures. I got all my shurikens out before he ate me, so. Pretty okay. Tyrion's out, though. Don't want to be rooted. I guess we could still die here. That burst damage is nuts. But again, you have to position so perfectly to get that Shingen value that I don't really recommend it for new players to Genji. I don't really recommend it at all. Alright, team. Well, let's take a look at Genji. Did I miss anything? Uh, he was added in for Heroes 2.0. This is where we got the original Hanamura map. This is also where we have the new monetization thing uh, that we have in the game right now. The emojis, the loot boxes, the banners. Um, all that was added the same time Genji was added. There was also a really big promotional... Thanks, team. GG. There was also a really big promotional campaign to try to get Overwatch players to come over and play. Uh, because Overwatch was just doing extremely well. It was booming. And uh, they wanted to try to share the love a little bit, a bit, a little bit with that. I know a lot of people came over. Uh, I don't know how successful it was at making the majority of those players stay. While we were talking about it before this game started, uh, a few people in chat said that they started playing around that time uh, because of the 2.0 promotion. But, you know, I think they're the minority, unfortunately. Genji is the weakest he has ever been. And he's still a pretty strong hero. Again, if you want to try him out, uh, I use Swift as the win, Shuriken Mastery, Perfect Defense, Dragon Blade, Shingen, Final Cut, and the dragon becomes me! Uh, but you don't have to. His E build's pretty easy and allows you to like hit and run quite often as well. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. We're going to be playing Greymane next, a character I have not played in like six months. <sighs> Okay, bye. See you later.